Mr. President, this is a special time of year, Christmas. All of us are in a hurry to get home. Our children are waiting for us to get home. Our families can't wait to share the joy of the day. We're great to have fun around the fire and fun around the household. And I hate to be the Grinch that stole Christmas in the Senate, but I think it's time something be said. If, if, if not for any reason except I don't want us to think 10 years from now, if only I hadn't said this, maybe this would have happened. Or if only I'd seen it coming, maybe I'd have done something. We, 2008, 2009, the senator from Montana, Senator Hoven, myself, and others, we went through the 2008, 2009 housing crisis that ended up in mortgage-backed security failures. The, 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 uh, all the troubles they had on Wall Street, uh, Dodd-Frank, everything that went over, a collapse of our economy, worst collapse of our economy ever since 2000 and, and uh, since 1927. And we all remember what happened when we ended up getting the tarp. We ended up having crisis after crisis. We've slowly but surely found, guaranteed enough stuff to get the market strong enough to begin to build back. And it just now is back where it ought to be from a standpoint of values, which is a decade later. But quite frankly, the housing market is not as strong. Its only strength is that there aren't that many houses for sale. That's because people aren't putting them on the market. Builders can't build specs. It's not near the credit that it should be. The people who have resales are putting them on, but they're fixing them up because they're staying longer, so they're selling them for more money. In the multiple listing service in Atlanta, Georgia, when I left my company in 1998, there were 140,000 houses on the market in Atlanta, Georgia in June of 1998. Now they're about uh, 60,000. That's not because the market's failed. It's just it's not that big a housing stock that's out there for all the reasons I said. And in terms of financing being readily available, it's readily available, and that's what I want to talk about. I was thinking the other day, I, I heard an ad on the radio about uh, no doc loans, and I heard an ad about VA 100% loans will prove what the banks want, and stuff that I knew was just patently wrong. So I turned to the the business section, which I used to always look at as a businessman every day, but don't anymore because I don't have the decision to make. But I'm glad I did because it taught me a lesson. I want to read you this from last Sunday's paper. How about a loan with no down payment, zero down mortgages, and jumbo loans? We'll approve what the banks won't. That's exactly the thing that took us down the wrong path in, 19, in 2008, 2009. Greed took over common sense, common sense failed, and we did some bad things. The, uh, all, all the things in the mortgage-backed security market took place all at once, and what happened was, because money was chasing rate, and rates were starting to rise, and now they're starting to rise, that's happening in our economy, then interest, instruments that yielded higher rates than the going rate for rate or credit started being created to be sold and packaged on Wall Street, You'd make money on the sale of the security, but you'd also fund a mortgage at a higher yield to you, the investor, which is just fine and dandy until the person at the lower end of the spectrum who gets approved with a no document, no down payment loan ends up qualifying for it, gets it, doesn't make a payment, they get foreclosed on. All of a sudden, the credit is called, is lost, the house is lost, and the things that happened in 2009, 2008 start happening all over again. I'm not saying we're on the verge of a collapse, but I'm saying it is a carbon copy I mean a carbon copy of exactly what was happening in 2008 and 2009 when the markets collapsed. Now, we can't afford another one. Banking is stronger today for a lot of reasons, mainly because there are not nearly as many of them. And there aren't many, as many of them because a lot of them failed. In the South, in Atlanta, Georgia, in my state, we lost more than almost anybody in the country, simply because the, the capacity wasn't there. As I said about the housing market, the number of houses available in the marketplace are much lower than they were back in the 90s or back in 2005, 6, and 7. Not as the, it's, and it's down because there's not as much to put on the market. There's not enough credit to finance it to put on the market and have spec loans. And people are very tight with their money because a lot of them got burned in 2008, 2009. They see their parents who lost their house. They see savings that they lost. They see values collapse. They didn't get their, couldn't get through their college by borrowing against their home because the home equity loans died. And there are lots of folks out there that are trying to put together instruments to package them in an attractive way to sell them on the New York markets and through mortgage-backed securities and attract in low-credit borrowers or young borrowers who aren't totally prepared to borrow the way they should be. It's high risk for us. It's high risk for our economy. The middlemen make a lot of money early, but on a 30-year mortgage, you don't want to just make your money early. You want to have somebody with skin in the game 
for all 30 years. So I just want to say to all my colleagues, and I'm talking to myself as much as I'm talking to you, and I'm not talking at myself, I'm talking with myself. We have got to be careful if we see things happening that happened in our recent past, that we didn't learn from them. If we let them happen again, they'll be worse. And you'll just say, well, I wish I'd seen it coming. Well, it's coming. You read the paper with me, and I'm going to come to the floor a lot in the next few months just to kind of mantra myself. Because, you see, I see the creep of easy credit, the creep of no documentation, the creep of no underwriting for, for quality of borrower, the creep of greed coming into the marketplace. <clears throat> and the greater it gets, the worse the economy is, is, and the faster it goes bad, and we all go bad with it. So I just come up to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I don't want to be the Grinch that, that, that stole Christmas. But it's happening, and it's being advertised in our newspapers. It's happening in our cities. It's happening in our backyard. And we need to make sure we don't let it get away from us, because if we do, we'll have only ourselves to blame. And I yield back.